promote our grain free pastry. Um, and so this grain free pastry recipe is in the cookbook Life Changing Food. Um, and you can buy it pre made from Primal Alternative, which is super handy because not everyone always has the time to, you know, boil the potatoes, cool them down, make a pastry. Um, it's so nice to be able to grab that out of the freezer. So they have the um, potato version and the sweet potato version. So you can get either one from Final Alternatives. So I'm going to be using this pastry today to show you a couple of my favorite recipes. And I'm also going to use some of the fat and seedy granola, which as you can see, I already have been using. <laughs> we really love this one. It's so delicious with a bit of yogurt and fruit, um, but I'm going to use it in a dessert today. All right, so first of all, I'll show you, I'm just gonna pop this back in the fridge so it stays cold. We're not ready yet. And feel free to ask questions as we go. Um, hi, Lynn. Thank you, Karen. Okay, you can see here I've got some roasted fruit, which probably if any of you follow me, you know all about roasted fruit because I make it pretty much every week with whatever fruit I have such a good way to use up all the bits and pieces of fruit. So in here today, I've got um, four apples that I've sliced quite thinly. And I've got some raspberries and blueberries, a little drizzle of honey and a sprinkle of vanilla. And then I popped that into an oven. I think it was a 180 degree oven for about, it may have been 45 minutes, but basically until the juices start to reduce. So you, if it's got apple in it, you need to stir it now and then. Um, so I've re reduced that down and so it's kind of jammy, see? And we're gonna use that in a fruit tart and in another dessert. So I'll put that aside for the minute. And first of all, I'm gonna get the custard going because I hope this is okay that I'm making other stuff in the recipe. I wasn't sure how much, well, hopefully we can get all of this done in an hour. So this is gonna be fun. All right, so what I'm gonna do is make um, like a caramel custard. And here I've got some cashew milk that I already made. So that's 100 grams of raw cashews with, um, you just blend them up and then add 600 mils of water and blend that for a minute. And you can do that in a blender or a thermomix. Don't turn off. I'm just, see me and the thermomix, there you go. <laughs> Um, and so what I'm going to do is make a quick custard with that, pour that over the fruit and then use the granola as a crumble. So some of you probably know my um, apple berry custard crumble, which is such a classic quirky cooking recipe. It's been around for so many years. Um, this is like the cheats way to make it. All right. So you totally should try this. Now I'm also going, as Elise was talking about, um, it's not just grains that sometimes cause issues for people, especially when they're working on gut health. It's also the starches. So I do reduce starches wherever I can. And I'll often use gelatin instead of starches in my custard. And the reason for that is, for one thing, the gelatin is really good for gut health. And another thing, it's, it just yeah cuts down on the starches. If you do it this way, it will still be runny when it's hot but then it will um, thicken as it cools. Okay, I've got some honey, about a quarter of a cup of honey. That's 80 grams. And that is to taste. You can totally, you know, adjust that to taste. If you can have dairy, it's nice to have a bit of butter in this custard. It just makes it really creamy or a bit of ghee. I can actually have a bit of dairy, but I don't do well with milk, so other dairy I'm fine with. So I usually add a bit of butter to give it that caramel flavor. And of course, a pinch of salt for the caramel flavor. Two eggs. This recipe is in my Simple Healing Food Cookbook. And there's also a version on the blog, coconut caramel custard, which you can use coconut milk for, but I just used cashew milk because that's what I have. <laughs> All right. Now, what else do I need? Vanilla, don't forget vanilla. This is vanilla powder. You can use extract or paste, whatever you've got. And okay, let me just think I've got the sweetener, the milk, vanilla, gelatin, butter, egg, salt, that's it. 
right, so I'm just going to cook that up. Now, if you don't have a thermomix, you just simmer this on the stove over low heat and whisk it until it's sort of creamy and thickened. In the thermomix, it's eight minutes on 90 degrees. Speed four. All right. Now, while that cooks, I'm going to go ahead and show you some fillings for pastry. So some of you, is that too loud? Hopefully that's not too loud. Bring it over this way. So I'm going to do a kale triangle filling, which if you have the life-changing food cookbook, you probably know this filling. I'll show you. That's the life-changing food cookbook. This one has a lot of pastry ideas um, using this dough, this pastry. And one of them is the kale triangles. That is such a um, well-loved recipe in our house because you can make them, prepare them ahead, freeze them, just grab them out for um, lunch boxes or to go somewhere. And then I'm gonna show you another pastry as well that we love that's a savory pastry. Steph says, can cashews or cashew milk almost always be interchanged with coconut milk? Yep. You can definitely swap it back and forth. Coconut cream, cashew cream, coconut milk, cashew milk, swap them. No problem. I'll just show you this book. So this is the Simple Healing Food Cookbook that Elise was talking about. Um, that one just came out in January and it's completely grain free and it's also completely starch free. So it's all um, focused on gut healing. So that's the custard we're making there. And I'm going to, um, actually, let me just angle this down and I'll show you what I've done here. That one's for a different recipe. Okay, so here I've got a really big bunch of, well, you could use kale or silver beet. I've actually got three different types of greens in here because I use whatever comes in my CSA box. And quite often I'll have three to five different types of green, leafy greens. And I just chop them all up and um, use them either in this recipe or in soups or stews, but I'll chop them up and put them in the freezer bag and just pop them into the freezer if I'm not gonna use them straight away. But this makes a really great filling and you can add cheese if you want to, or if you're dairy free, it still tastes delicious without cheese. So I've got um, a small brown onion chopped up as well. Some lemon juice, just 50 grams of lemon juice. And we're going to use some olive oil so I'm just going to pop that into the pan. Bring this over here for a minute. So about half a cup of olive oil, it's quite a lot. And I don't generally measure. <laughs> just, you know, just guess. I didn't measure. Um, yeah, you don't really need to measure all this. It's just... What have you got? Pop it all in at once. And you can use a big frying pan or a um, Dutch oven or a pot on the stove. Yep, just dropping it everywhere. Now I usually use cast iron. So I add the lemon juice at the end because I don't want the, um, the lemon juice to damage the seasoning. So I just leave the lemon juice till the end. Bit of salt, that sea salt. Now I'll just get that started on the stove. Adding the salt at the start actually helps to break down the cells so it all softens quicker. Um, so you can add that in at the start. And you wouldn't think that such a simple filling would actually be something that kids would like, a heap of greens, onion, lemon juice, but I don't know how many little kids I've given these kale triangles to and they just love them. Has anyone, um, let's see, Christine says, 
um, kale version. We also use beetroot leaves. Yep. So I get all that in my CSA box too. Um, sweet potato leaves, the end tendrils of sweet potatoes, and also pumpkin you can use. Um, vine spinach, Ceylon spinach. So I just put a whole mixture in. Sometimes I even put mustard greens, all sorts of things. Oh, thank you, Karen. <laughs> yeah, so I give these to kids. And if you're worried about kids not eating them, um, you can add a bit of cheese, like feta or even cheddar, mix it through. Um, and then they generally go for them. But I think it's the pastry that makes it. So if you've got a good pastry, you can use that for so many applications, both sweet and savory. And this grain-free pastry is absolutely amazing. It's silky to work with. It's not hard to work with. It doesn't just crumble and fall to bits when you're working with it. Um, and it turns out very much like a traditional pastry. And I think sometimes that's one of the things we really miss when we go grain free is um, those traditional pastries and breads. We really miss that texture. Um, so this one, I've also got a little trick that I do with this pastry where I add some butter and make it a little bit more short so that you get that really kind of almost flaky texture. Um, I'm sure that Helen's going to give you guys um, some new recipes. So I'm not sure what those recipes are, but she also has an ebook, which I can give you the link to if you like, um, which is all recipes with this pastry that are from Quirky Cooking. Um, and it's actually focused on Christmas, but I mean, you can make them any time of the year. So there's things like, um, let's see, I'm trying to remember what's in there, ham and cheese buns. So using it like a bread dough. Um, there's a fish pie, there's the feta and mint fataya, which is what we're going to make today. There's pasties using leftover stew, there's lasagna. So you, you roll out the pastry really thin and use the pastry as lasagna sheets. It's amazing, so good. Um, mince pies for Christmas. Um, there's even one of those chocolate hazelnut Christmas trees with all the twisted um, branches. So yeah, there's heaps of ideas in there. So if anyone wants that ebook, it's free and we can put the link there. Um, oh, that's awesome. So if you want to know more about that, we'll uh, maybe we can put it in the email or something, Helen. Um, okay, so while that's all cooking, I'm gonna start working on the next one. So this one you may have seen on my Facebook or Instagram the other day. Um, my sister and I made some on Monday and I've got a heap in my freezer. That's okay, I will share them around. When the kids' friends come over, they often end up taking some home. So I've got four large eggs here. I've got some quark, which is a soft cream cheese. You don't have to use quark, you can use feta and just blend it up. But it's a really beautiful um, soft cream cheese. And I've got, oh, that's nice and quiet now. Phew. Um, a little bit of brown onion and a couple of handfuls of mint, mint and parsley. So I'm just going to quickly chop those up. And we're just going to mix that all together. And that's going to be another one of the fillings. So there's so many simple things you can do for fillings, for pastries, you can use your leftover stew. So if you've got a lamb stew or a beef stew or a, a nice thick chicken soup, once it's, you know, leftovers in the fridge and it's cold and thickened, use that as a filling in pasties or pies. You can make chicken pot pies with, I find chicken pot pies really easy because you're just using a little ramekin. The filling goes in and you've just got a circle of pastry on top so you don't use as much pastry and um, it's super easy. So we do that kind of thing for um, lunches, lunch boxes and work lunches. Well, my kids don't need lunch boxes, they need work lunches nowadays. So just roughly chop up those herbs. Um, sometimes I add chives, garlic chives. I'm gonna stir that. Let that cook down. All right. And 
and we'll do the cheese here. I'm just going to use the whole tub. It's not really something that I measure, but that's, let's see, 325 grams. There you go. This recipe is basically in that ebook that I mentioned as well. So you'll get it, don't worry. Now with the onion, you could chop this up in the Thermomix or just hand chop it and just do it nice and fine. And you can leave it out if you don't want onion. Does anyone have any questions while I chat? Um, love that knife, Joe. Oh, it is the best. That is our favorite kitchen knife. I have 22 good kitchen knives and this one gets used most every day. It's the Victorino Sentoku. All right. I'm not a chef. I just, I'm just a mum cook. So you'll notice my chopping skills aren't amazing, but <laughs> keeping it real. Okay, so you wanna cut that really fine. So you don't have big chunks of onion in a small pastry. Um, yes, don't worry, Nina, I'm going to show you the adding the butter in tip when I do the fruit tart. Any other questions there? Okay, her book's in storage. Oh, <laughs> okay. That's probably a lot. I might put the rest of that in here. If you ever see a recipe where you think something has too much onion or too much garlic or not enough, it's definitely the sort of thing that you can adjust to taste. Okay, so now we've got all that, we're going to add the egg in. Quark is quite salty, so you don't need much salt, but if you're using, and feta is as well. Um, so yeah, up to you if you wanna add salt or not. I always add a little bit of pepper, it's good Aussie pepper. And I'll just mix that all together. Yeah, so you definitely can chop that in the thermi if you want to. The only thing with the Thermomix is sometimes if you over chop, you get mush. So just be careful with things like herbs and onion, because if you want that roughly chopped kind of um, texture, sort of stay on speed four, three to four, and just let it go for longer. Okay, can you see that? So I don't want to blend it and blitz it completely. I want those lumpy bits. So if you do use a Thermomix, mix it gently. You don't want it completely creamy. Okay, so we'll just put that aside. Just gonna rinse that off. Now we might go ahead and get the fruit tart started. This beautiful thick fruit. Um, actually, I'll just leave that there for a minute. Grab the rolling pin. And actually, I'll move that other way. This is um this is very much just uh keeping it real kind of cooking demo, just how I cook, <laughs> which is I don't know how to do it any other way, guys. So all right. Now, when you roll out the pastry, just do it between two sheets of baking paper. See, I might just use, so it comes in the two sections like that, which is really handy because you can just pop one back in the freezer if you don't need both of them. And I'll just make a small fruit tart so that we can use the rest um, for the dessert. 
the rest of the fruit. Now next. This one's a bit bigger. And you just want to roll it out to about, say, two to three mils um, thick. And this makes it, this, um, that one section of pastry makes a lovely little small fruit tart, or you can put the two together and make a big one that you sort of fit onto a pizza tray. You can see how easy that is to work with and which is amazing for grain free because grain free pastry is often quite difficult to work with. All right. So you want your fruit not to be too wet. See how I've cooked it down and it's not boiling hot now. And you just fill it into the middle there. And then just take the edges and move them in like that with the paper. So this is a rustic fruit tart. Anyone can do it. It's not like an apple pie with the lattice that you've got to fiddle around with for an hour. This can be done really quickly when you suddenly find out visitors are coming over and you just go, ah, what can I make? This is really easy. Pop it onto your tray like that. And then we just need um, a little bit of egg wash. So there's a tiny bit in the bowl there. I'll see if that's enough. Um, I could add a little bit of milk. Maybe I'll just crack another egg. That might not be it. And of course I got shell in it. There we go. You could use egg or you could use um, milk, any kind of dairy-free milk or dairy milk. Or you can just use a bit of melted butter or ghee or oil, or even just a little brush of water. Just it, it helps it to get a crisper crust and it also um, gives it a bit of color when it's cooking. If you put egg, you get a lovely golden brown and it just looks really good. And if you're okay with a little bit of coconut sugar, you can sprinkle that with coconut sugar. Sort of like, you know, traditional apple pie, how it's got the sprinkle of sugar on it. You can do that. And I use so many different types of fruit for this in, in, win, uh, sorry, in summer when you've got all the beautiful stone fruits, um, plums, peaches, nectarines, apricots, whatever you've got. Um, I've put mango in here before. I've added dragon fruit. I've added all sorts of things. I might put a little sprinkle of coconut sugar. Is that allowed? I can find it in my really messy drawer. I hope you can't see this. Okay, I can't find it. Too bad. <laughs> Keeping it real. Okay, so that's going into a 180 degree oven and, and it'll take about 15 to 20 minutes. All right, so I'm going to take this over here to show you how this is going. All right, so we've got the, um, the greens are wilted and nearly cooked through. So I'm going to add 50 mils of lemon juice. And I'll just turn that off now. Don't really need it on. And we'll get started with the pastries. Actually, I'm going to quickly do the dessert. Okay, thanks, Lynn. Keeping it real is why we love your lives. Okay, here we go. Now, first the fruit. Just pop that into the dish. And you don't actually have to cook the fruit with this recipe because you've got the custard and um, the fruit kind of cooks in the custard. But I just love the flavor of roasted fruit because you just get a richer flavor. 
So um, up to you, if you've got, um, you know, just if all you have is some frozen berries and you can't be bothered roasting them, just chuck them in, add some thin slices of apple, a little bit of honey, um, vanilla. You could add a little bit of cinnamon if you wanted to, nutmeg. So just put that across the bottom. Now, because I've only done a partial recipe, we won't need all this custard. My kids will be happy about because they can eat some later. So this is the texture with the gelatin custard. You can see it's more liquidy, but as it sets, it does um, get thicker. And it also kind of sometimes looks a bit separated when it's hot but then you just, you can just mix it again and it'll completely go smooth again. I'm just gonna, so you just barely cover the fruit with it like that. And then we'll add some granola on top. So there's a few different granolas in the Primal Alternative range and I'm sure Helen will tell you about that. But yeah, this is one that I really love. This one has, let's see, probably I should just get Helen to tell you what's in it. Oh, here we are. It has peanut butter in it. That's why it tastes so good. Macadamias, sunflower seeds, pumpkin seeds, coconut sesame seeds and maple syrup and then seeds. So I should just show you. It's really delicious. And like both of these desserts are such quick desserts to make. You know, if you don't want to cook the fruit and you just chuck that in the oven, got people coming for dinner, so easy. But I better set the timer, otherwise I'll get distracted and forget. All right. So I'm just going to check if there's any questions there. Not yet. Um, oh, Karen, Maisie, a few people have said the pepper and salt they love. You can buy them in my online store at Quirky Cooking. Um, the pepper is local to me. It's grown just down the road. And it is the only pepper farm in Australia, except for the wild native pepper. And it is so fresh. It's amazing. All right, so now we're going to do the fun bit, which is play with pastry. I love playing with pastry. I always said I should have been a pastry chef and then I had to go gluten-free and then grain-free and then, yeah, so that didn't happen. <laughs> and then um, turned out that there was things I could do to um, enjoy pastry still. Okay, so I'm going to start with um, I'll start with the cheesy ones. All right. So I'm going to make the, I'm using my wonder bag as my computer holder, as you can see. I'm so professional. <laughs> All right. I'm not really sure. Let's, let's see if we can do this scientifically. Let's think about how big to make them. We'll cut them into even sized. That's a good thing about having this really properly measured pastry, I can actually get the right amount. Here we go. So we'll cut them into how many is that? Uh, 16. And then roll them into a ball. And then just use your fingers. Now oh, that might be a little bit too small. Well, this will be all right for kale triangles. So this is a really good canapé actually. If you make them really thin, this is a good trick. We did this at our book launch a few years ago for life-changing food. Actually, the chefs did it and they did it so thin and then put the kale in there, the kale mixture, and then brushed it with olive oil and they were really crisp and they're just little. So I'll show you that first. Just changing it as I go. Um, I'll just quickly grab this, some of this. Then 
while I'm doing this, um, I'll tell you a bit of our stories for those who don't know. Um, we had a lot of the symptoms that Elise talked about in our family and um, the mental health stuff got worse with my son, Isaac. So you can see what I'm doing here. Just press three sides in like that and make a little triangle. That's it. Um, so yeah, we ended up having to go grain free um, to work on gut healing. And that would have been uh, sort of midway through 2014. And um, we went completely grain free for over two years. And then we allowed, you know, a little bit of grains here and there properly prepared um, whole grain, whole food grains back in. But it made such a huge difference. And I find if I ever, you know, if I ever get a bit slack and let too much in that I shouldn't, I really lose energy. That's probably the main thing I've noticed is um, I, I really lose energy if I have too much in the way of grains and starchy foods, which is interesting because most of my life I really struggled with energy levels and probably, and also anxiety. I think someone else mentioned that they really struggled with anxiety and they didn't notice the digestive issues. It was the anxiety at first. And that was me as well. Really tired all the time, really anxious, um, very, yeah, I, I reacted to so many foods, especially dairy. But once I healed my gut with a grain-free, starch-free diet, it really made a huge difference to my energy levels, my anxiety, my um, food intolerances. I could eat dairy again, which was amazing. Um, so yeah, it has been a really big thing in our family. My son had um, severe OCD and it really, really helped him to heal. And um, he doesn't, he's not on any medication now. And that was just such a big blessing for our family to understand the importance of food that nourishes your body and your cells and really um, doesn't, um, stop the nutrients from being absorbed, which is what was happening with us. Okay, so can you see what I'm doing there? That's just little tiny ones. These are like, I'm doing canapé size. So obviously you could do bigger ones, um, twice as big, and you can do them thicker if you want to. Um, so that's a really easy pastry that you can do. So back to my story. Um, if you're if you're struggling with anything like food intolerances, energy levels, anxiety, um, even depression, it's really important to look at refined foods, starchy foods, grains, all of that kind of thing. Um, I interviewed a well-known psychologist on my podcast, a psychologist from America, and she said she will not work with clients who refuse to change their diet and the first thing she does is gets them off sugar. And she said that solves so many people's mental health issues, like really changes it, just getting them off the sugars and the, and the starchy refined foods. Um, when I say sugar, I'm talking refined sugar. So we still eat honey, dates, fruit, that kind of thing. Um, but it's just amazing how much it can change your life and your health to go back to a traditional whole food diet that's the first step, always a traditional whole food diet. And um, it's been huge for us. So if you see photos of me from say 10 years ago, I was very skinny, underweight, um, dark circles under my eyes. I was getting sick every month. Um, I was constantly having histamine issues and all of that kind of thing. And it just yeah, it's not, a, it's not a good way to live. You know, we want to be able to live a vibrant, healthy life. And um, the best way to do that is to eat the diet that our bodies are intended to eat. And in our Western society, we get pretty slack with that because we're like, well, you know, if it's, if the government approves this food, then it must be okay. They're not going to approve stuff that's not okay. <laughs> 
Um, but you've all seen the kind of things that get the heart foundation tick and you're just like, how is that good for your heart? So yeah, well, you just have to use common sense and say, well, what has the, what have humans been eating for thousands of years um, and thriving on and what is new and untested and causing issues and really ask ourselves, do I want to be, eat, do I want to be um, basically an experiment or do I want to just eat what I know that human beings have thrived on for a long, long time? So that's the way that I look at whole foods and at, at food, I just try to really focus on foods that we know human beings have thrived on for a long time. Okay, does anyone have any questions? Um, yeah, refined sugar symptoms. Yeah, that's, a, it's huge. Even now, my son Isaac has to be super careful with his diet. He's, he's just about to turn 21. So those of you who've seen him on my <laughs> Um, posts and stories and maybe even on stage speaking with me for years and years and years he's about to turn 21 um, still hasn't been back on medication since he was 14 and doing really well but he will be the first one to tell you that if he gets slack with his diet and starts having the refined sugars and and he finds vegetable oils and gluten um, really affect him he starts to get really anxious again and his skin breaks out. So, um, you know, pimples are actually quite a blessing because they give you a good symptom of what's going on inside. And um, explaining that to your teenagers is a really good thing because, you know, helping them to understand you can't see what's going on inside of you, but you can see your skin reacting. So there's something happening inside of you. Your skin is a sign of that. It could be eczema, it could be pimples, it could be hives or itchy skin. There's something going on with your health if you're having those issues. So Isaac, that's sort of like an indicator for him that he needs to pull back. And he's very good um, at keeping an eye on all that now because he knows how much better he feels when he stays on a really um, whole food diet with, without all the refined stuff. And he doesn't live at home anymore. So yeah, he really has to keep an eye on it. Okay, so Mel says, if this bakery is based on potato. Okay, so you, that's a good question. You can get the, um, you can get the sweet potato pastry, which is the lower starch one, but also remember that you can, if, if the potato has been cooked and then refrigerated, or in this case, frozen, um, you are reducing the, the problem of the starch causing a big blood sugar um, rise because the prebiotic starches are actually good for your gut and you increase the prebiotic fibers when uh, starches when you refrigerate or freeze the dough. Sorry, the potato. I'm probably not explaining this very well. Doing too many things at once. Hang on. So um, with, with the starches, I just reduce them as much as I can. I don't completely go starch free anymore. But when we were on a gut healing diet, I did go starch free. And um, Primal Alternative has some products that are starch free. Like Elise said, the fat and seedy bread, the bagels, um, this granola, like there is some starch free options. But if you're not needing to go completely starch free, this pastry is a really great option because the potato or sweet potato has been frozen, refrigerated frozen. Um, so it's a lot, it's a lot of a slower um, rise in your blood sugar levels when you have the pre-cooked and um, frozen potato. So I don't, these days I don't worry about it. I have a bit of this. But back when I was really working hard on gut healing, we didn't have starches at all. So yeah, it depends where you're at. And some people will still be at the whole food stage where you're just sort of starting to work on all this. 
and don't stress too much. Just get those good ingredients in as much as you can. Um, you know, the primal alternative, all the whole range, don't worry about whether it's, you know, higher carb or lower carb or whatever. Just start getting those whole food, grain-free foods in and the healing foods and the, you know, traditional foods in nature. Um, and then as you go, you sort of adjust things to what you need to do at the time. All right, I'm just gonna go ahead and brush these with some egg. Oh, actually, no, sorry, I'm gonna do olive oil on these ones. Sorry, I've just gotta go wash my brush. It's got egg all over it. You could use egg on these, but I just find that olive oil makes them really crispy. So just brush all the sides, whoops. And if you want to, you can put a little bit of feta in each one and just sort of press it in. But I'm making these ones dairy free and the other ones will have dairy. And then we can get these in the oven and that hopefully they'll cook. Oh, they may not cook in time, but I can always get Helen to send you all a photo or you can look on my Instagram, <laughs> Joe Witten. <laughs> And then you'll see what they look like when they're done. Sorry, I will um, answer those questions in just a second. Maybe I should finish this later and answer questions while I do the attire. Helen, you can't unmute yourself and read me the questions, can you? So I can do both at once. Would that be okay? What a good idea. Yes, I can read you the questions, <laughs> Joe. <you. laughs> I just sat here like completely relaxed, just watching you cook, thinking, ah, oh, it's, it's so good. There's quite a few comments about the <laughs> gut healing formula, actually, Joe. People saying that they've oh, yes. done it and they're feeling so okay, good. Cool. So can you tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah, so we have an eight-week program that we run a few times a year and then you have access for 12 months. Um, and it's all about getting the healing foods into your diet, transitioning to a traditional whole food diet um, that is very healing for the gut. And it's not just about the food, as you can imagine. Um, sorry, I'll just see if I can fit this in my other hand. Here we go. It's the granola, I mean, crumble, yum. Um, it's also about reducing stress on your body in many, many different areas. So we talk about um, reducing the food stress. We talk about reducing the lifestyle stress. Um, we talk about emotional stress. We talk about all of that kind of thing first in the program. And then we get on to um, adding healing foods into your diet, um, slowly changing things in a gradual way so that it's not overwhelming, all the while keeping that in your mind that stress needs to be kept low for healing. So it's a very gentle approach and lots of yummy recipes and cooking demos and heaps of great info from Elise. I'm just going to grab something else. I may have put too much cooking into this one hour. At least I'll get a couple of these done for you. Um, and yeah, it's a really gentle approach to transitioning to a healing diet. The next intake isn't until October, but um, if anyone's really feeling desperate, I do have a good article that I can um, send you on just some simple ways to get started with working on your gut health. So you can always email me at help at quirkycooking.com.au and I can um, give you some tips. But I'll really quickly do this. Go ahead and ask the next question. Hey. Sorry. Are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Sorry. <laughs> I clicked the wrong button. Um, could you reckon we could get that article and send it out with a replay? The what? Oh, Your yeah, article. yeah, sure. Yeah. Can do that. That would be yeah. good. All right. So back to the question. So one from Steph, she says, could you do little fruit triangles? 
Yeah, now that's an idea. I love that idea. And this is how you do the fataya. See how you just fold the circle up and pinch the edges and leave the um, top open. And that will kind of rise a bit because that has egg in it. So um, don't overfill it or it will kind of burst out everywhere. And I'm using a quarter of the dough for this one because I'm making them big because I need to hurry up. <laughs> <laughs> okay, go ahead and ask another question. So the next question is from Numbat, who says, I didn't realize there was a sweet potato version as I'm allergic to pay, uh, potato. Is that important? And then Karen said, which pastry is nicer in flavor, Joe? More like a normal dough taste. Oh, well, they're both really good flavor. I wouldn't really say one above the other. Um, but if you want it to look like normal pastry, maybe for your family, then I would get this one with the white potato. But the sweet potato one has, oh, I just absolutely love that one. What's your favorite, Helen? Definitely the one you're working with now, the grain free uh, okay. pastry. I really yeah. like that one because it just looks, it's just, it's more sort of like it looks the like a normal family. pastry. Yeah. 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 Exactly. And, and most people wouldn't know. Like I make this for people all the time that are not into health food. Same. And I love the lasagna with this rolled really, really thin. And I've done that for like mainstream guests and then told them yeah. at the end, guess what? That was dairy yeah, free. Yeah, no free. So funny. It's and so funny. also pizzas, same. Oh, I have to tell you this story. This is really funny. Um, we had a big pizza night here for my kids and all their cousins and friends and um this was a few years ago and and I made heaps of pizzas using this pastry as the pizza base so you just par bake it then you put your toppings on and then you pop it in the oven and my nephew cheeky thing he's always trying to get my kids to eat not healthy food and he's like Simmy Simmy come and have some of this pizza it's really good it's wheat and he just, my son just laughed at him. He said, it's not wheat, it's gluten-free, grain-free pizza. And he's like, what? <laughs> was so funny. That's so, so it funny. really is, yeah, it really is very good for people who are not, like if you've got family members that resist this one. Yeah. Next question, Joe, from Steph. Um, she says, probably yeah. a question for Elise, but what about carb intake for women who struggle with hormone issues? Um, yeah, that probably is a question for Elise, but I know from what I've listened to with different talks on hormones, you really need to make sure you're having proteins and fat at every meal. Um, you can have some carbs for sure, but you need to also have proteins and fats at breakfast, lunch and dinner. Um, and I think what Nat Kringidis talks about it and she says palm size protein every meal. So whatever that is for you. Awesome. And Lynn says, would melted ghee work to brush on top as well, Joe, instead of the yeah. olive oil? Yeah, definitely. Perfect. And that's us right. caught up on all the questions. Woohoo. Woohoo. All right. Well, these um, are probably a bit big because I'm trying to hurry now. <laughs> but basically, you can do them smaller. Like you could do more like the other ones. I do make these ones a little bit thicker because I just find that um, they need to hold up to hold that wet filling. I might just show you some that are finished, actually. Some I prepared earlier. These ones were actually made with whole almond meal, so you can see it's a bit browner, but that's what they look like when they're done. And I keep them in the freezer and just grab them out, pop them upside down in the grill to warm them and then that way. And um, I have these for breakfast, for lunch on the run. I chuck them in lunch boxes. They're so handy. So that's just the quark or feta with egg. And it's, it's sort of like um, equal amounts, basically. So however much you have, just do equal amounts. Some herbs, parsley, chives, whatever herbs you want to use. Um, and a little bit of salt and pepper. Is that all I put in there? Oh, my sister usually puts a bit of lemon zest. I forgot. Sorry, Joy. <laughs> She'll be like, Joy, you forgot the ingredient. Um, a bit of lemon zest is really good in there, but that's optional. So yeah, they're really good to have on hand. And I just brush these ones with a little bit of oil as well. Um, 
So yeah, I'll just see how the fruit tart's going. I'll probably give that a little bit, oops, a little bit longer. Hang on. But you can see um, it just holds together really beautifully. And the crust is kind of, uh, you know what? I was gonna add butter to that and I totally forgot. <sighs> okay, if you've got a whole packet, of this pastry, pop it into your Thermomix or food processor with 80 grams of butter, just unsalted butter, and then make sure the pastry is chilled really well because it will fall apart otherwise. And roll it between two pieces of paper and then do the same thing with this fruit pastry, or you can use it on apple pie or chicken pot pies if you want more of a short crust kind of texture. And that just works really, really beautifully. Sorry, I forgot to do that. Um, but I'm going to pop this back in the oven. It needs a little bit longer. And I think we have to stop, do we, H? Do we need to stop? No, Joe, we're good. Um, oh, well, yeah, we've oh, got eight more right. minutes. So maybe you could do a tap okay. dance or something for us. <laughs> okay, yeah. I'm so good at tap dancing. Um, but you can use your imagination for different ways to fill this pastry so um, we do leftover stew like a I think I did mention that making pasties and so all you do for that is flatten it out you can roll it between paper if you want to but I just find it's easy to use my fingers and then I just put a about this much cold stew roll it over put it on your tray and then just go crimp it with the fork and then brush that with egg and that's also a really good lunchbox filler um, if you have, um, let's see, what else can we think of? Yeah, if you have the cookbooks, there's a lot of ideas in there. Um, so let's see, we've got the sausage rolls. It makes amazing sausage rolls. Like, don't they just look like real sausage rolls? <laughs> But they're probably more real than most of the stuff you get at the groceries at the shops these days made with margarine and who knows what um they are so delicious and if I'm in a really big hurry and I know there's mums out there that don't have time to fluff around with sausage rolls if you buy some really good quality sausages like paleo sausages and just wrap them in the dough and then cut them in quarters put them on the baking trays brush with egg sprinkle with some sesame seeds if you want to and bake them until they're golden. And that is the cheats way of making sausage rolls. It's so easy. There is some pizza here somewhere. Here we go. That's a pizza made with the dough, the Nomato and Halloumi pizza. So the life-changing food book and the simple healing food book both have um, so life-changing food is mostly grain-free. There's only make, maybe five recipes with, you know, some black rice or something in it. Um, simple healing food is completely grain-free and um, you'll find heaps of ideas in there. And um, H is giving away one of these cookbooks in the giveaway at the end of the seminar. So stay to the end. You might win one. <laughs> yes, definitely. Um, one of the things I love to do with the pastry, Joe, is, um, you know, at the end of the week when you've got like a little bit of chicken curry left, a little bit of chili left, and it's not enough to make up like a meal, we have um, surprise pies. And you just, everyone, we made them in a little and pie maker that we got from really camera. Idea. And you don't know what you're going to get. It's so fun. It's like, what did you get? What did you get? Oh, I got chicken curry. Yeah. Mm, so good. There's another question. <laughs> That's such a good idea. I love it. It's so fun. Um, the question is, what is what brand of butter is the best? Good question. Uh, that's that's hard to say. Like, I mean, the best best would be an organic butter that's grass fed. We have a local organic dairy here. You can go visit the cows. It's just amazing. They have the best butter, but you pretty much have to sell your firstborn to buy that all the time. So um, <laughs> just get the best you can in your area and don't stress too much. At least in Australia, our cattle are grazing on grass. Um, if you can get the New Zealand butter, that is also really good butter um, because it's pasture-raised cows. Um, I live in a dairy 
area. So it's a bit easier for me. I can buy bulk local butter. So it's sort of, yeah, it's difficult to say exactly what brand, but if anyone wants to um, share their ideas, go ahead. Uh, Linda says, I'm amazed at how the pastry holds together. Being celiac pastry is what my husband misses the most. Yep. And when it can do that, it's like, yes. <laughs> um, the dough, how long does it last in the freezer, Helen? Is it? Like I just checked. <laughs> I just quickly got my notes out because I haven't used it for three months. Is it, is it frozen. Here? Three. I mean, it will, it can go longer. It's I just reckon. that it can get freezer burnt and then it's not as nice. Um, but yeah, it lasts a long time in the freezer. You won't leave it in the freezer though, because once you start using it, you'll be like, yum. Mm -hmm. um, the name of the other book, Liz, is Life Changing Food. They're both on my website, Quirky Cooking. Life Changing Food has just sold out and the next print run arrives early August, but there is also an app for that one. You can buy it as an app. Life hyphen changing food on either app store. Any other questions before I go? I'm sorry I didn't quite get these cooked to show you, but I will show you a picture on Instagram and maybe H can share it or something. <laughs> yes, we can do that. Awesome, yeah. awesome. Um, Liz, the books are available anywhere in the world, but the postage is not very um, cheap. But we are actually working on um, setting up warehouses in US and UK. So you can email help at quirkycooking.com.au if you want to know more about that. Um, and as mentioned before, keep an eye on my Instagram and Facebook because I'll mention on there as well. well Lynn says, don't go. <laughs> you can see me on Instagram. <laughs> I'll still be cooking here. I know. Let's have another Thanks hour of Joe. Me, <laughs> <laughs> oh, you guys are lovely. Thank you so much for having me. I'm going to just keep cooking away here. And if anyone wants to drop by for afternoon tea, let me know. <laughs> we are all on our way. Look out. There's going to be 500 awesome. people turning up your house. <laughs> Nobody's home. No. Actually, I think one came. <laughs> Joe, thank you so much. I know that you've been, you know, so instrumental to so many people's health journey. Um, there was just one question that we've missed, and it's a really good one. And that was, what were the foods that you removed from your diet that you felt made the biggest difference? See, I'm trying to keep her around for a bit longer. Ah, um, <laughs> refined foods and vegetable oils and refined sugars. Huge difference. Um, and then when we went grain free, that was like the next level. Like I did the refined stuff first and it took me a while to get into the hang of that. And then I removed the grains and it was like the healing took off. And, um, you know, I don't stick 100% to grain free. We, we now have a little bit of well-prepared sourdough or grains now and then I try not to do it too often though because I notice that I start to get tired if I have it too much so it really is huge going grain free dairy I did have to remove for a while actually for years and years and years and then once I healed my gut I could bring in good quality dairy especially fermented dairy um, I don't drink milk and I don't put milk in my cuppers, but I do put a little bit of pure organic cream and I have cheese, butter, ghee, yogurt, milk kefir, and I'm fine with those now. I really love your um, 24 hour yogurt, Joe, that's in your mm -hmm. um, Simple Healing Foods book. So good. And everybody's loving it. That I just think it's too. so good for us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so good. Awesome. Joe, thank you so much. We all love you. We want you to be around for more, but we know you've got, you know, a weekend to have and family <laughs> to be with. So we really appreciate you spending time with us today. Thank you so much. Thank you, guys. Lovely to chat with you all. Bye. Bye. All right. I have stopped recording and... We, I'm going to keep the meeting. Oh, hang on. I thought I had. Let me stop recording.